Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, your introductory question here will come from Jeff Ferrado of Cal Sports Report. All right, Jeff. Good to see you, Jeep. How you doing? Great, thank you. Well, welcome aboard. Um, <laughs> just uh, curious, you coached the NFL, I believe, for 25 straight years. You've taken a couple years off from it. What's the transition been like back to college? I don't think you coached in college since like 1990. That was a couple of lifetimes ago. Um, what's this been like and, and how is it different? Well, fortunately, uh, not only had my dad been a longtime college coach with my brother, Paul, coaching at Wisconsin, I don't feel like I've uh, missed a beat. And then having two sons that have played, one at Stanford with his fifth year at Tennessee, and then my younger son, Jackson, up at Oregon State. Uh, trust me, I'm a college football fan. But is coaching it, in what ways is it different than coaching the it program? It used to be that you felt like a lot of scheme, for example, maybe starting in the NFL and then trickled down to college. I think, you know, we're seeing some scheme from the, uh, from the college game bubble up, whether it's RPOs. You know, even when we were in San Francisco, uh, we ran a lot of pistol stuff, uh, some of the uh, zone read. So I think there's been probably a bridge that people have been crossing back and forth, uh, both scheme wise and coaching wise. And what about just dealing with guys this age versus fully grown men? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, we don't have a whole lot of gray. I thought I saw a, a gray hair or two on Tonjus, but he, he, he informs me that that, uh, that is only from stress that has nothing to do with his age. Um, but yeah, they're, they're great kids. And, you know, starting off with uh, Colin Moore. I mean, here's a kid with a 4.0 GPA, so you're not going to find anyone smarter than him. So uh, communication has not been a problem. Uh, but yeah, some of these guys just uh, haven't had their driver's license all that long. I wanted to ask you also, if I could, about uh, local guy, Jermaine Terry is a freshman. He's, he's one of seven tight ends you got, I know. So, and he's probably been at four college football practices so far. <laughs> but what are your impressions so far? What have you seen? What have you seen on tape? Well, first off, you know, I feel my heart goes out to all these seniors, not just in the Bay Area, that didn't have a senior football season. So that's probably the one thing he wanted to be a mid-year enrollee. So he's hitting the ground running. But I feel bad for those kids not experiencing their senior year. But he's got a lot of uh, effort and hustle. He he does weigh 268 pounds. So uh, that's a that's a that's a big youngster. And uh, I'm really proud of the way the veteran guys have taken him under the wing because you're learning stuff every day. And so we expect that he'll make some mistakes as he goes. But the fact that we're out there on a beautiful sunny day and practicing, that's exactly what JT needs. Is he at all overwhelmed at times with all the new stuff? You're well, you know, we see a lot of tight ends play both the on the line position and the off the line position. We're just trying now just concentrating with JT on the line of scrimmage as a true why. And that way he can at least uh, sink his teeth into one area of responsibility. All the other guys they're learning from on the line, off the line, even in the backfield. And when you watch him, what, what particular assets does he have that, that impress you? You know, for that weight, he does move well. Uh, we joke he's got heavy hands, which means when he does punch you, he's got a little uh, gunpowder behind the punch. Uh, and I think that uh, he's got a joy about playing right now. So he's uh, young and enthusiastic, and that goes a long way in spring ball, too. Thanks a lot. No problem. Okay, we'll go to Jim McGill from Bear Insider. Hey, Jeep. Welcome to Cal. Hey, Jim. Thank you. So I wanted to ask you, uh, your last college game appears to be against Cal and Mike Pulaski, the, the color. <laughs> I remember about that. Very game. nice, the Copper Bowl. Uh, yeah. I remember uh, Paul Roach wanted to go for it on fourth down. He said, I've been coaching for all these years. We didn't make it. And he said, I was right all these years and wrong today. So I do remember the Copper Bowl. Uh, we were fortunate, unlike Cal, we were coming from Wyoming where we had like minus 10 degree weather. So we thought Tucson was fantastic. Do you... Uh, have you had a chance to talk to the new uh, or to the color announcer for, for Cal, uh, Mike Pulaski, who was the quarterback for Cal? No, but I can't wait to bring him up. And then he's been doing some Bay Area work. He actually did uh, some Bay Area work with uh, uh, when my son Keller was playing in high school. So Mike's done a nice job transitioning into being a color analyst. Uh, so I'm, I, I got more than enough things to talk about with him. Sure. So can you talk about your analytics business the last two years after coaching in the NFL and how you think that uniquely prepares you for your new role at Cal? Well, you know, that's become a buzzword, hasn't it? And that uh, I think every coach wants to trust their gut instinct. And then we joke there'll be guys that will be hired, especially on an NFL staff or a crew of guys that will say, you know, we can leverage the game differently. More often than not, most fans now recognize, especially in the NFL, that teams are going for it more, maybe inside the plus 50, knowing that, uh, you know, you're trying to extend that possession. And so, uh, the analytics that I was involved in, we're trying to 
maybe take a deep dive. You know, there's a lot of ways that you can measure analytics. Sometimes some people will say expected points. If you are here, almost like baseball analytics, if you're here, we expect to score this many points, second and four on the plus 40. The other way to say it is win probability. Sometimes when you're watching an NFL game, they'll have an Amazon thing that said the Atlanta Falcons win probability is now 99%. It seems like both of those are nice, but from a veteran coach's perspective, you kind of want to have the mix between the two so that they can trust their hunches. Like, you know, I really want to go for it. You saw that with Belichick in the Super Bowls. If you have uh, a Brady on your side or you're going against someone like Russell Wilson, how does that affect it from game to game? So a lot of fun with numbers, but it's still a game played between the field with, uh, with good football players. And in part of your capacity with your, your new business, did you deal with uh, young players who were prepping for the NFL draft or was that not part of your not as much as really just uh, leveraging the game, game status and game situation is probably what we spent the most, most of our time doing. Got it. Do you have any sense of how the offense is being implemented in a larger scale this spring, or are you a little too new to know that? Because I know they held back a lot this last, this last year with the limited practice time. Yeah, Jim, that's an excellent question because – this system is built not just for one tight ends, but two tight ends to be contributors. And you see the trend in some colleges that are going to 10 personnel, like USC is having a lot of four wide receivers on the field. But with a second year in the offense, I think for the quarterbacks predominantly, but the, all the players offensively, I think you can get deeper into the playbook. You can make uh, adjustments uh, or corrections to it that maybe take advantage of some of the individual skills that you have on your roster. Having coached with Coach Musgrave before, uh, are there a lot of similarities to what he did in the NFL uh, or really tailored to more what Cal's personnel has to offer? You know what? Uh, I love Billy, and he is running an NFL offense, which is great for all these guys, and he's not watering it down. He's challenging them right now in the spring to learn these concepts and to execute at a high level. And we had a fun practice today, and I thought I saw some real steps. And that's really what you're looking for in spring ball and fall camp, to take steps to know what you can trust on game day. Great, thanks. Okay. Okay, we'll go back to Trace Travers from Rivals. Yeah, good afternoon. Coach. Hey, Trace. Welcome back to the Bay Area. Um, one thing, you obviously have had two sons who were playing, are playing or have played in the Pac-12, and you have to get back into the recruiting game now as an assistant. How, how has that been in the early going since you've been here in the last, I guess, week? Yeah, you know, for a week, I appreciate all the support staff that's been helping me, getting me ramped up. But uh, I think being a parent of one, uh, Keller, my older son, was a national recruit uh, offered early by a number of teams. And then uh, my youngest son, Jackson, was more at the other end of the spectrum, was uh, lightly recruited. And I think that's been a great bookend for me to understand maybe where these guys that we're recruiting are. There's sometimes diamonds in the rough. Take Jake Tongas. He was really lightly recruited walk down here to Cal. He's a phenomenal player, one that I have high expectations for. So the recruiting game is its own world. There's no doubt about it. We love tracking the recruiting and trying to assign value to these kids, but ultimately they have to get on campus, get on a college field and make plays. And with that, what do you think of your uh, room so far? You've mentioned Tonjus, Moore, uh, JT so far. How have the rest of those guys looked? what you're trying to find is a role for all seven. Again, the younger guys know that their role might not eventually come till maybe a year or two down the road, but we want to give them a sense of immediacy. We've been using two groups to practice. We're calling the blue and the gold and that gets everyone reps. That's what we want to have in the fall is reps. So we can define those roles. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have a final question? If uh, it looks like Jackson Moore from 24 uh, seven, go ahead, Jackson. Yes, uh, very nice to meet you. Thank you for hey, your Jackson. Time. Um, going back to the recruiting a little bit, uh, you mentioned some of your perspective on how you're uh, approaching it. How would you say that you, maybe your style of connecting with some of the, the young kids and uh, what you try to get across on some of these phone calls that you'll be participating in? You know, I mean, there's two things you're looking for. From a player's perspective, you're simply looking for a fit. This is a good fit for me. If I think I'm a talented tight end, I'm not going to go to a program that really doesn't use the tight end as maybe a blocker or a receiver. So I think you wanted to define what your system is and then try to find those players that fit that system. And the second thing that you want to find with recruits, no one's a finished product when they step on board. So do you have those attributes that you can work with 
to develop the position. And that's definitely true with the tight ends. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jackson. Okay. Anybody else with the final question? Give you a couple more seconds here and we'll let Jeep move on. All right. Thanks, fellas. Thank you very much, Good. Jeep. We appreciate it. All right. I'm sure we'll see you down the road. Okay. Take care.